you talking to? I'm not doing no intro. She's going to do the go. intro, everybody. Can you pressure no. her? Okay, fine, whatever. Of all the things I remember that my stepfather did for me, it was that he taught me to tie my shoes. He actually took the... I'm, I've already read that. He had an... Okay, you know what? He, mm -hmm. And it meant so much to we, me. We stopped. Yeah, we stopped there last night. Yeah, we went. We were down here. But um, he, he it meant so much to me. I don't remember. Yeah, I said S word. Else, I don't remember S word. Else, it had that he more than me. one S word. But go ahead. Though. But I remember that. I remember this. Yeah, I remember that. He had had he had had enough of me trying and failing to tie them myself, and he decided to teach me himself. As much as it meant to me, I want to that moment to be with my father. It sounds so simple, but to me, it was huge. Still is. I wanted a lifetime of those memorable moments with Dad. Instead, the moments that I remember are all about the times he failed me. As a result, I pushed everyone away. I wouldn't do anything anyone th th thought I was I was capable of. I would participate. I I wouldn't participate. No, oh. I was capable of. Wouldn't participate participate in anything because it wasn't with him. Even as a man now, I'm doubling down on wanting him to have been there. I didn't have the connection at the time that I was waiting for him until I made that connection. Um, I couldn't change my direction. Leading by example, due to to the standard he he set for me, I quit on everything because he up and left one day. I could do the same. I didn't stay in the band. I didn't stay in the drama club. I didn't try out for sports. I didn't do anything. My father once took me when I was a little kid up to a football field. There were a there there were a bunch of kids playing there. So of course I thought I was going to, I was going to get a I was going to, going I was going to get Are you glitching? <laughs> to play to play football. I thought, "Oh my god, that is is so cool. He brought he brought me to a football game. My head started spinning with thoughts of all the things I wanted to I was about to do. And then we left. He'd only brought us there to pick something pick something up for himself. Mm. I continued wishing for him to take me to the these places to do these things. So in the interim it's in, interim I quit everything. Because my father showed me I could. Time. Children don't want what parents think they want. Dale. They'll say what they want, the newest toy. Or they'll ask for the latest fashion design, the hot new sneakers, the coolest new style of jacket, whatever. In reality, there's one thing they want from their parents more than any of that. They want their parents to spend time with them. Is they that want how you feel about them me? to spend that time with them to give them Is that their how you feel approval, about me? approval to see what okay. they they're not a disappointment to, to see that they're not a disappointment to them. When they're down, be it they're hurt or they are scared or sad or upset, they want their parents to swoop in and save them. The kids I saw when I was coming up that were running drugs with me, the older ones that were getting high, that was all a byproduct of the emotional unrest in their lives. In selling, running, or taking drugs, they were quitting. They, like me, had no one there, the most important person, the one who was supposed to be there to save them. They continued uh. on, that pain, uh, on that path because they were in pain. The drugs, the crime. None of these things had, been, had anything to do with being cool. In essence, it became a matter of, if you're not going to be, pay attention to me, if you're not going to hold my hand, if you're not going to even have a conversation with me then tell me why why you left uh. then i'll show you i'll teach you a lesson you'll never forget parents are the model up for their children they are the center of their kids universe they re revel in the fact that 
they look like their parents. They look they look to their behavior to model their characteristics. Their personality traits and quirks, it's fun to them, a source of pride to be able to be like the person they admire so much. As they get older, they measure themselves against you. Are my shoes bigger than dad's now? Am I taller? When parents remove themselves from the equation, who will the child measure themselves against? Uh. The things they need to learn most in life from their parents, the things they need to learn most in life from their parents. They're going to learn them, they're going to learn them someplace else because their parents didn't teach them. The power is given to other voices saying, try this drug, try this drug, take this drink, have the S word that children don't need to know. When children are young, they ask what seems like thousands of questions per day of their parents. Yeah, I do. When they get I'm older, still. those questions slow down. Maybe I don't mind the questions, slow. though. I know. That, I, well, I don't know that. That doesn't mean they don't have questions anymore. It means they're getting answers somewhere else. They stopped uh -huh. asking their parents because their parents' answers started changing or worse, yet they never come. That's why I always tell you I want you to ask me stuff. You know? He should ask you anything. Ask me anything. He never came back. There were three graduations that were important when I was a kid. Fifth grade, eighth grade, and twelfth grade. Because there were six of us, there were always two graduations per year. Someone was always That's a lot of kids. graduating from elementary and middle school. I have three sisters, and we only skipped a year in terms of when it was someone's turn to move up. When I, it was time for my fifth grade graduation, no one came. I was oh. devastated, even in the span of all things, all the things that have happened to me in my life. I still remember it was one of the worst days of my life. I sat in the auditorium, and nobody was there to clap for me, to encourage or celebrate me. It was a solid reinforcement of to the idea that I was alone and that I mattered to no one. You things, see how he's interpreting that? Things were different from my 8th grade graduation, or so I thought. My father showed up to our house and picked me up for the ceremony. I remember distinctly that he was in a tr white truck. It stood out because I knew he didn't own a white truck. We drove together to the graduation site. You kneel. Fanil, you, fanil. I don't know what that. Hall? No, fanil would be. Fanil. Fanil. That's a funny word. I don't know how to say that word. Hall in Boston. Fanil. Hall in <laughs> Boston. Boston. Okay. All along the way, he's take talking to me, telling me how glad he is that I am graduating, and that he was so that he was proud. Then he tells me he hired a photographer to take pictures during the ceremony. I couldn't believe it. Finally, he was doing all of the things I wanted him to do. He showed up. He was proud. He was even paying for someone to take pictures to remember the event. I couldn't get over how happy I felt and how great I thought my father was in that moment. We pulled up to the hall. I had on gray pants, a blue jacket, and blue sh blue dress shoes. As I opened, the do opened my door, he says, I'm going to let you out here so I can go in part. I'll see you inside. Oh, no. Cool, I told him. I went inside, and they lined us up for the ceremony. It was a beautiful venue. Fen Feniel Hall is a historic spot in Boston. I don't know how the school arranged to have the graduation at that location, but they there were there we were. My mother was there. Some of my sisters and brothers actually came too. Even though they managed to make it to this event, I didn't care. I was looking for dad. I was waiting for dad. Dad was coming to see me. I looked all around. I saw men up in the upper levels taking pictures, so I tried to figure out which one was the photographer my dad, my father hired. Still, I kept looking for dad and I never found him. That's when I realized he wasn't coming. He wasn't even dressed to come in. He had on work clothes, driving a work truck. I knew then that none of these of those photographers had come for me. I don't know why he even. You're slurring. Us. You're slurring a little bit. 
I don't know why he even bothered to give me a ride to graduation. It was in that moment that any expectations I had for my father di- dis- dissipa- dis- dissipated. Mm, right. I knew then that he would never be there for me. Even after that day, he randomly stopped by the house. He he'd stand in the door and he'd tell me that he'd be back on Saturday, Saturday to come and get me so we could spend time together. I'd simply say, Dad, it's all right. Stop with the promises. You don't have to come. You wouldn't hear, he wouldn't hear that. No, no, I'll be here, he'd say. If I don't make it, it's because my truck blew up. That's unrealistic, but okay. To, mm-hmm. to, to, to this day, my mother and I have a running joke, starting back in the eighth grade, about the condition of his truck. Depending on where he, he, said, he said he would be, what's worse, the next time he did show up, he'd act as if the time before never happened. Never an apology, never, and I didn't mean it. Nothing. Okay, stop right there, because this is important. He's talking about his dad, but I I know grown. It can be a man that does this. It can be a woman that do does this. It can be anybody. Always pay attention to when somebody doesn't keep their word, and they don't apologize to you for it. They just act like nothing happens. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now sometimes they could forget. It could be an honest mistake, but in other times, if somebody is doing that repeatedly, I really want you to pay attention to that. Okay, that's a char- that's that's called a character flaw. Okay. At least I, it, made a heart and a like. Yeah, somebody did make a heart, but um, but I want you to hear what I'm saying right quick. Yeah. Okay, and and you have to always be a person of your word. Okay, mm-hmm. not saying you have to be perfect, but you have to be a person of your word. So I make a whole bunch of mistakes, but guess what? I always be like, dang, my bad. I try to. And if if I don't, never be afraid to call me out on it because I may have forgotten. But if I just act like, do, 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 that's the problem. And don't you ever do that, okay? Mm. I can't stand that, okay? All right, go ahead. No, I don't know where I was at. You were right there. I gave up on him then. I gave up on him then. I decided from that point on that I would reject him before he ever had the chance to reject me. I don't know if the relationship had been severed in his mind or not, but it was for me. Later in the 10th grade, something happened at school. I can't recall what what, what or where the office said they were going to call my father. I told them not to. That he isn't, he wasn't my legal guardian and that he didn't, he, he meant nothing to me. They called him anyway and told him I said that. When he came, he asked me if I had actually said that. He was bigger than me and I was afraid of him, but I told him that I said it and I, and I meant it. First, you stumble. So, there I was. I had given up on my father, which meant I had given up on myself. Once that happened, it became easier and easier for me to follow the wrong path. First, I learned it's okay to hit people. It's a natural it's a natural progression from there to feel that it's okay to shoot people, to, don, to dominate anyone around you without ever having to explain yourself, to simply run over anyone in your way. It didn't happen overnight, though. The damage that had been done when that last straw hit my back that graduation night was a pebble in a pond that sent ripples outward, ones that would continue on and carry me into a dark and terrible future. It started that very next year in the ninth grade. Would you like to stop there? Chapter 3, The Fall. Just before 8th grade graduation, I had to fill out a form to go to the next school. Elementary to middle school happened automatically. But to go to high school, there was a paperwork involved. There was paperwork involved. This form gave me three options. I could go to my district school. And then I could choose two other possibilities. And... And then I could, and if you, you didn't, you want to cut off the fan. <laughs> if you didn't fill out the form, you were automatically sent to your district high school. Okay. 
I think you should cut off the fan. That's why you. That's why you're doing all that. Do you want a tissue? I didn't care about the form. My whole neighborhood went to West Roxbury High School. All of my sisters went there. My brother, my neighbors, everyone. So I was going to go there. It was just what everyone did. Just before graduation, however, Mrs. Ellis, my music teacher at the middle school, pulled me aside and told me that I couldn't go there. But his siblings went there, though. I know. Why? I asked her. I want to send you to another school, she said. Oh. She told me. I didn't understand what she meant. You are, you are a musician, she said. You have the gift. She had determined that I had a talent for the trumpet. In fact, she felt I was excellent. Um, she felt I was excellent with the instrument. She wanted nothing more than for me to go to a school where I could let my talent flourish and truly take hold. Her husband was the music teacher at the high school she had in mind. She wanted me to be in his class and his band. She made me fill out the form and select the Madison Park, Madison Park Magnet School. To my surprise, when I submitted it, I got accepted. I went there and joined her husband's band. When I got, oh my, I'm sorry. When, okay. I, when I got there, I was surrounded by nerds, <laughs> kids that were nothing like me or kids that I ran with. Still, they let me stay because the band teacher was Mrs. Ellis's husband and because I really was that good at the trumpet. In the morning, I hung out with the nerds. I, come the afternoon, I was hanging with the t come the afternoon, I was hanging with the tough guys again. At this point, I'm not just running drugs, I'm selling them. I'm carrying guns. I mm. couldn't let go if of it just because I joined the band. It had become a part of who I was, the identity I'd ad I adopted by giving up. I lived in two worlds, one world with the nerds, one world with the tough guys. Hanging with nerds was cool to me, too, because it was it was easy. It wasn't work. It was I was the coolest guy there, and I was great at my in instrument. Life with the life with the tough guys was fun. We'd sneak out of school, hang out in stores, and steal things, just doing dumb mess words. One day, those worlds intersected. What's in the box? It wasn't long before one of my boys noticed the case of my trumpet. What's that box, box you're ca you carrying, Dre? They asked me. I'd act like I'd, I didn't know any better. What are you talking about? Every time we see you, you're carrying that big A word, that big butt box. Oh, I said, that's my trumpet. They laughed. Man, that's stupid. Black people don't play with with the, play the trumpet. You can't do it. You can't do nothing with that. I didn't know how to defend that back then. I didn't know in any black music, musicians. I didn't know about Miles Davis, the Morale, Mar Marsalis Black Brothers, or Dizzy Gillespie. 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 This is Gillespie. We didn't have the exposure to information online like we do today. I just saw pictures of the guy with the big cheeks. It was I wasn't an an avid reader. Good job. Oh, I thought I was supposed to be together for a second. An avid reader. So I didn't know poop back then. All I knew was that I played the trumpet because Mrs. Ellis made me play in middle school. I just played. I was a natural. I was on punishment all throughout middle school, so I played the trumpet. I didn't read music, so I learned to play by ear. Back then, I loved Rocky and the music from Star Wars, so I learned it by playing seven days a week. My boys gave me an ultimatum. I had to get rid of the trumpet or get rid of them. It was that simple. Here I was, a kid in ninth grade at a school where I didn't know anybody except for the people in the band. These tough guys were my new friends. I figured out in the third grade that I was alone. 
I was I was on my own and had no one I could depend on. I couldn't bear the thought of not having friends, of being alone again, especially at that age. I gave up my trumpet. 4 p.m. Growing up poor is horrible. People have done it and made it. Growing up without a dad sucks. People have also done it and made it. Growing up in the inner city can be terrible. It's hard, but people have done it and made it. You can't make it without a dream. It's just not going to happen. When I gave up that trumpet that day, I gave up my dream the or the hopes of ever having one. I gave up on my only chance at having something that was going to give me some form of guidance and direction. The trumpet had me on a course to something, even if I didn't know it or understand it. When I gave it up, that one little light I had was gone. I had no place. I had to be in at, at a certain time or a certain location. I had no purpose. I was aimless. I drifted. It wasn't long before I ended up with my first arrest. That very same freshman year, I beat the... I beat the H-E double hockey sticks out of the senior class president. That was the first case I ever caught. Do you know what he means by first case I ever caught? No. Like, police case. Like, a case is like a, a charge against you. So that, that was his first time in trouble. Okay. Okay. They wanted to kick me out of the school system then and there. To this day, I don't know why they didn't. Maybe they, like, like some others, had seen that hidden potential in me. Whatever the case, I was determined to keep it hidden. The case got me 350 hours of community service, washing police cars, mopping up the cells at the police station. And... Why? Why is that thing so thick, tiny? <laughs> And cleaning at the courthouse. We had to report there every day to wash ca cars in the lot, including those that belong to the judges and DAs. Then we could. Do you would, know what DA stands no, for? I do not. Include. District attorneys. Okay. Then we would go next door to the police station and do my work there. At 4 p.m. every each each day, a van would show up. They would park on the side of the courthouse and they would, and, and the guards would go inside to get the prisoners. They'd come out with shackles and waist chains on linked up to each other. It was the most amazing thing, the most amazing thing I'd, I'd ever seen. Every day at 4 p.m. I, I made sure I was out in front so I could see these guys walk out to the van. I could not see it. I'd never seen anything like it. He said, I couldn't not see it. I couldn't not see it. I never seen anything like it. It was like a car wash where you don't want to look. It was like a car what? Crash. Mm. That means you're getting sleepy. Let's stop right now. You did a good job. I wanted you to stop when you finished the chapter out. When you start rushing the words, and, and, and it's okay. I, 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 it's okay. It's okay. We gotta um. I'm, we're gonna try to start earlier, the reading. Okay. You mm. did a good job. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Good night.